boom. What's up, y'all? And welcome to Design Therapy number 17. I'm your host, Kioni Chong, and I'm here with Jose Caballé and Mary Gribben. Uh, we welcome you from wherever you are in the world. We have a global audience, and we're excited that you're here rocking with us. As always, today's episode is brought to you by CORE, Brand Discovery Foundations. And these are not your lovely facilitators, but these are some lovely members from our audience. Uh, our emergency response team, we've got Patricia, Aurelio, and Mauricio, who are also here in the audience. So we're grateful for them. We just want to remind you that our mission is to activate, educate, and support a decentralized global creative community in finding their purpose, growing their careers, and leading the future. Our vision is to redesign the world from the inside out. So everything that you're experiencing here within our community through the system is co-creation. It is us being led and taught by you. It is you being led and taught by us. It is a global community of learning and experimentation. We're all the system. So as always, check out coresmagic.com if you're interested in learning about core. It's a brand strategy framework that a lot of us use in our practices. And as always, like and subscribe. So let's talk today a little bit about our agenda. We're gonna do our drop-in for 15 minutes. It's how we always like to open our, our sessions. We'll have the download, which is about the mindset and the theme for today. Uh, then we actually dive into the theme, which is business modeling. We'll follow that up with an example of how we're building our business model for the system. And then we'll move into shares and music and no cookies. So let's drop in. Our drop in today is name, location, what you do. And then what books, movies, or stories have influenced your practice? I'll model that. My name is Keone Chong and I'm located in downtown LA, Los Angeles. I am a systems engineer and a brand architect. And what books, movies, or stories have influenced my practice? Um, many, a ton, far too many to list. Um, hackers, uh, branded, um, Mad Men, um, you know, uh, Boomerang, which was seminal for me, seeing a young black man in advertising and creative and being a powerful creative director. Um, these films had huge influences on me. Um, books, just about every Simon Sinek book. Um, Infinite and Finite Games by Robert R. Kars. Uh, those books were seminal to me and really helping shape my philosophy. And uh, stories that have influenced my practice. You know, um, I'm big on music. I was a radio DJ for years. Uh, my father, you know, grew me up on, on incredible music stories from Jamaica and the diaspora. Um, so the stories that really in, that influence me are a lot behind, or many of them are behind a lot of artists, Bella Kuti and his ability to create a creative community, a city of thriving musicians where they all had shared and bartered uh, value. Um, Jay-Z, absolutely. Um, Master P and, and, and the empire that he built um, you know, I've always looked at hip hop and artists in that space as some of the most uh, revolutionary business model designers because they always had to break the models because the system of oppression that were focused around taking as much of their creative capital as possible um, was a huge um, driver for that innovation. But that's an example of a drop in and uh, I'd love to open up the floor and get the audience to drop in. Uh, if you'd like to drop in, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll go ahead and call on you. And first up, we've got Arsenijay. What's up, Arsenijay? What's up? Uh, Arsenijay Savic calling from Belgrade, Serbia. I do development and, and strategy. And I was trying to think, as, as you said, I'm also reading a lot of books, but I want to mention too that the first one is that uh, when I started my practice and the second one is like latest pick. So first one was uh, Brian Eno, Visual Music, 
I think that that book really opened my eyes to the possibilities of art and also uh, basically opened open me to thinking about how to think about art in, in different way, especially re regarding technology. And the second book that I read this year that I think was one of the best is Emergent Strategy, which is which is about how to how to use uh, nature and uh, inspirations from from nature as as a, as a guide. So that that's book that I really it's really short, but I think I'm I'm I reread it, uh, three times in in last three months. So mm. I feel that like this book is is really deep. Mm. Thank you so much for that, Arsenijay. And can you post the link to that book in the chat? Because definitely like to add it to our book list. Sergio, ¿qué pasó? What's up, brother? Hi, everyone. Sergio here from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm a brand strategist. And I'm going to mention one book, one movie, and one story. One book, uh, any book from Julio Verne, Jules Verne. I think it's the name in English. I like adventure books and part of my creativity comes from the inspiration that I got from him. So, yeah. Then a movie, I think, not a movie, but um, if this is a cliche. It's a series of a documentary series, abstract on Netflix. I saw that when I was like, I don't know, 20 years old and it shaped a new way of thinking for me. And one story, the story of Brian Collins, I think is super, super inspirational. And I love the way he thinks about creativity and shaping the world through design. So that's it. Mm. Thank you for being here. And I'm glad to be here as well. Awesome, brother. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Would anyone else like to share? The floor is open. So while you guys are debating, oh, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, Pape here from Panama. I'm an artist, an illustrator, uh, sometimes a brand strategist and other times muralist. And a long time ago, I used to be a pizzaiolo. Uh, I've been really influenced by salsa music. Grew up with listening to salsa, seeing my, my dad mimicking playing bongos or timbales and was amazing to grow up with Hector Lavoe, El Gran, El Gran Combo, La Fania, uh, all of the good ones, Richie Ray, Bobby Cruz, like salsa is a big part of, of my life. And I feel like now I realize how, how rich in storytelling salsa is as well. And uh, uh, I connect really, really good for, to the, those roots. I come from Cali, Colombia and Cali, known as the capital of salsa so that's yeah musically and music overall has been really important to me even like spanish rock like fito paez andres calamaro and all of the argentinian wave of rock and roll hit me really hard when i was a teen incubus and growing up growing, music is like always has been always been important in my life uh i don't read at all uh, I listen to podcasts and I guess uh, podcasts that I can share that impacted me is Impact Theory uh, uh, and, and yeah, movies uh, and one book, uh, Tang Girl for illustrator. I, I think Jimmy Hewlett, the illustrator from Gorillaz and Tang Girl mm -hmm. is like one one big influence for me. I love his style and from France, Moebius, I love also like the stories he tells and how detailed his illustrations are. And yeah, I'm Pape and thank you for being here. Thank you. Patricia, what's up? I was a bit shy to share what my inspiration were, but I'll go ahead anyway. Um, books uh, with Seth Godin, and I really love the one with Brené Brown. Daring Greatly talks about vulnerability and the, uh, the, her type of leadership I, I really resonate with. And movies, Homecoming by Beyonce. Come on. She had a baby and she had to prepare for a Coachella performance. I want to be like her, that queen. So, yeah. <laughs> 
that's it for me. <laughs> that's awesome. And thank you for sharing. I'm going to read a few from the, from the chat. Uh, we've got Roxana Kruger, web designer, and she's Mallorca, Spain. Many, many books, but the one that she loved is The Power of Moments. Many other from the Heat Brothers. Thank you so much for sharing, Roxana. We've got Porsche, and she's in the Philippines, and she is a designer. Uh, Influence by Gary Hustwick Films, Helvetica, Objectified, etc., and Abstract, The Art of Design. Yeah, I love those series. They're on Netflix, by the way, if you guys haven't seen them. We've got Amit, Amit Shetty, and he's a UX designer from Mumbai, India. And the books he talks about are Brief History of Time, Pandemonium by Piyush Pandi, and The Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Stainer, or Stanier. Brief History of Time was the very first movie that I ever saw in a theater with my father. A uh, very seminal flip for me. Um, let's see what else we've got in here. We've got Fahima. We've got Themes, and she's from Halifax, Canada. And the book, she's got Neuromancer, classic, 1984. And movies, she talks about Memento, Fifth Element, and Minority Report. Mmm, multi-pass, definitely. Um, and from music, System of a Down, Nirvana, Frank Ocean. Yeah, those are awesome. We got Bjorn. Uh, he talks about Victor Frank and Men's Search for Meaning in EDM music, Banksy's Exit Through the Gift Shop. Um, and for podcasts, we talk about Biz Buds with Tom Ross and uh, Mike Jonda. Uh, and one last one we've got, we've got Roxana who says, The Advice Trap from uh, Michael Bungay Stenier is also great. Um, and then we've got one last one I just dropped in before we move on. Uh, and that's from Ross Jopia. I hope I'm pronouncing that. Ross is yeah. e-commerce and digital marketing. But Ross, why don't you step on the mic and introduce yourself? Drop in. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey. Um, so, hello. Um, so, my name is Ross. I'm actually based in Vegas right now, but I'm from Manila, Philippines. I am a e-commerce and digital marketing consultant. So, I've been doing that for the past 10 years, uh, mostly for the automotive and electronics industry. Um, right now, I'm trying to transition my um, brand strategy, so I'm working with Patricia on that. Mm. And then for books, I would say Good to Great uh, by Jim Collins, and then maybe True North, so by Bill George. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, and welcome to the community. All right, so let's dive into our drop in, or um, we're gonna go into, let's get the share going. And boom, boom, there we go. So um, let's drive into our, our download for today. And uh, Jose selected this quote. And Jose, you wanna talk a little bit about it? Oh, and uh, replace the spotlight. There we go. Wow, we got a team going here, co-creation at its best. Um, in this topic of, um, of uh, business modeling, you know, I posted something on Instagram about cooking. Can you meet me on your side? So, uh -huh. um, I posted something on Instagram about cooking and about mixing, you know, different ingredients and having the right amount of fat and having the right amount of salt, etc. And, you know, business modeling can be really abstract. Um, it could be something that we don't do for our businesses because we're not used to it. So I, I, I had to learn it for two reasons. One, uh, for startups, working with startups, the CEOs asked me a lot about or since i'm a designer they asked me to help them do their diagrams but i got also used to doing it with barrett uh who you guys some of you have met in clubhouse um who was one of the business partners at my agency and part of it was so that we could you know build the user experience for the products that we were being paid to do uh, and if we didn't understand the business model it was kind of difficult to prioritize uh but what i wanted to share was where the business model kind of for the system is coming from and how the influences of all the things that we read 
are really crucial. I read something or I saw a video uh, after I read the book Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, um, which was recommended to me by the founder of uh, Consensus. And, and it was interesting because he said it as a response to one of my comments or like I kind of said something in a meeting a little bit matter of factly or like a little bit like oh this vision of the future is like this and he's like okay yeah you you should read this because it's all in there I'm like he was just basically it wasn't it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a knock it was just a like yes yeah, smart guy you should take a look at this book and then I actually um and which is I, lo I love doing that too which is just like letting people say hey you should read this um i read it and one of the things after i read it that i that i uh, the book is amazing but um uh the founders of link uh the founders of linkedin and google gave credit to neil stevenson uh for in that book for linkedin and for google google earth all these things all of those things are in the book so new innovative ideas and technology coming from uh, a book. Now, that, those were not necessarily the business models because the business model that Google ended up using was advertising. But here is from Alvin Toffler's The Third Wave, uh, something that has really inspired me um, in what you know the system is and in what I've been doing for the last you know seven eight years. One decentralization will occur. New political parties, new management techniques, new philosophies to challenge the centralized the centralist premises. This was written in the 80s. Uh, if you look at the book, uh, the cover is super like cool and retro. The value of specialization and professionalism will decline, meaning you don't need a design degree to do you know, X, or you don't need a, need a CS degree to become a developer. You can learn all that stuff. You can be multiple things at the same time. You can be an illustrator, uh, you know, a, a t-shirt magnet and a brand strategist, it's all okay. All, all business models are open. Um, and then the final part, you know, the self-help movement is in another facet of, the, of this trend. These are summaries from the book. He, the way he says that is the business of the future will be personal uh, development and not necessarily as like, whoa, that's the end all business, that everything in the future will have to involve that because of the separation between or the ending of the separation between consumption and production meaning people will be able to merge their purpose with what they do and put that into action because of the affluence and the uh two two reasons one because we have the ability to do it as americans or as global citizens uh that have these economies that we can practice within uh, across lines which is the next uh quote um, that do-it-yourself industry is experiencing explosive growth, various transnational networks or groups will form to pursue their economic and other interests, transnational networks. So we're all here from all over the world. You know, he basically wrote um, in the third wave and, and there's a, a, a paper called the fourth wave, which then starts to look at what's happening right now and what's happening next. But he began to paint a picture of what today would look like uh, 25 years ago, and here we are. So if you listen and you tune in and you're able to allow for the synthesis of the things that you're interested in and then remix them into a unique form, you know, whether it be your story, whether it be your business, whether it be your, um, your interactions with the people around you that you collaborate with, it's okay. But the most important part at the end, then there's financial modeling and ensuring that it's all grounded in uh, material value exchange that can sustain you, your family and your tribe. So so the levels of idea brand, you know, which as designers, you know, Keone and I were talking about and, and he can speak more to this. We look at it as, you know, identity, uh, but then the, the nugget in the middle of the business model tied to the bottom part, which is the base which is the financial model, having the ability to kind of be a shaman of all three in, and you have to do it simultaneously is what ultimately gives you, you know, the ability to manifest something into reality and make it real. And I'm so caballero and I'm complete. Thank you for that, man. Um, I don't know if this is the right place and we have you near. Um, 
but let's I'll dive into it and I want to share a little bit about the conversation that we've been having over the last week and sort of my my insights over the week and to today and ultimately what led us to uh, this download and sort of the conversation that we want to have today you know um, We've been going through the Accelerator program and we've been focusing on story. Uh, and, you know, it, it's been really exciting for me because in the manner in which we're telling our story, we're learning how to interface with business and with commerce, right? Matching our own creative journeys to a language that businesses speak, right? And they speak in business models. They want to understand the impact of creative. It's not so much, oh, it's light and it's fluffy and it's pretty and it's beautiful. Yes, those things might be considerations for businesses, but for the most part, they're looking at how does your creative, how does your culture impact my business? So how does it drive revenue? How does it decrease costs? How does it increase awareness and efficiencies, right? All of the basic principles that businesses need uh, to survive and, and, and to stay in business, to thrive. Um, you know, that interface where the creative and the culture meets the commerce is branding. And so uh, for any of us that are in this creative space that uh, is looking to, to execute creative, strategic impact, that's branding. That's the marriage of the culture and the commerce. So, um, you know, this conversation today and uh, the conversations that, that we'll have in a few moments um, when we dive into and we'll share our business model and then open up the floor for business model conversations uh, is really about that interface between culture and commerce. Um, you know, I'm our CFO, uh, Monique Mayon, a powerful creative who's very rooted in reality. Uh, she has this quote that she shared with me this week and it really struck me um, because I know that I suffer from it um, and getting over it was really uh, a catalyst for, for my glow. And she says that refusing to discuss business, refusing to have that financial literacy is a limitation to your growth. Without being able to understand uh, the power of business models, without being able to understand how your creative interfaces, uh, you will not be able to appropriately value your craft um, and that's the path to, to leveling up and scaling your impact and your value. Um, for me, once I really started to dive in and marrying the, the creative with the business modeling, that's when I was really able to start requesting real value and serious uh, compensation for the work that I was doing. And uh, yeah, with that, let's, let's move on in today's conversation. And let's talk a little bit about business modeling. So Jose, you want to uh, dive in? Yeah, I switched it up a little bit and, and I, let, let's just go over the systems business model again. And then I think I want to open the conversation. So how, how do you learn it? How do you apply it to, how do we do it for ourselves? So someone last time we did this on Wednesday for core office hours uh, said, hey, can you send me that? And, and I sent it to him. He wanted the screenshot of the system business model uh, because he's doing something similar in Africa. So. Um, I'm curious by a show of hands in the chat, how many people here have some experience doing the business model canvas um, or have the books, the strategizer books, or, you know, that's one book that awesome. Uh, I like this one that right now I'm looking at testing business ideas since we're in the middle of testing all the ideas for the system. Um, can you lower it just a little bit? Can I, I guess is my, oh, you know what? I could also lower my headphones. Um, yeah, there we go. I lowered my headphones. That helps. Um, so just looking at it really quick, the way that I look at it, I look at the left, the problem, and then connection, the middle, the value, the unique value proposition, and then the customer segment. So it's providing the prop, uh, solution to the problem, uh, or the solution to the problem is the unique value proposition. So in core, for example, the needs are going to be probably where the problem is. Uh, and then uh, you reverse it. So, you know, here, I don't think that the, the value proposition is very connected to the problems per se. So that's actually something that I'm noticing and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, mar market access, design talent, who can collaborate well. So that's really everyone being trained in the same 
tools, right? Everyone understanding core, understanding how to put a project into flow, being clear on their purpose uh, so that they can connect with each other. Um, that's that. So if you look at the sequence, you know, connection with purpose, you know, being able to collaborate well and then matching based on those things, that builds a very cohesive community. Um, in terms of, of the uh, other components, these are malleable. You switch them around all the time. This is like the eighth, tenth time that I've switched the details. And this is not even the most recent. We just changed it again this week just to do another kind of uh, exercise with um, the marketing team. And then the last slide, just if you go to the to the to the one that well again this one was actually in the middle it's the view through the it's the view or the connection between the financial exchange but also the uh so this is the financial model and business model coming together uh in an abstraction obviously but so community on one side how it interacts with the knowledge, with the information, with, the, with with what we're teaching, right, or what we're sharing, or how we're what we're learning. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then at the community with this shared knowledge, then is able to trust each other because it's all one operating system that is installed, which leads to the opportunities. So if you have an agency, your biggest challenges are going to be developing your people and your process, right? So your community and the knowledge that they have on how to do it so that they can trust each other and so that you can sell projects. So this is, whether it's an agency or whether it's a community or whether it's whatever business it is, ultimately, even for brands who are now becoming more community um, uh, living brands, which is a brand that actually lives inside the community and it's formed and shaped by the community. This is the model regardless. And then the, the, the last one was in an exercise to kind of figure out like what our, um, what I call the wedge, uh, Barrett facilitated and I facilitated, okay, what is it that we each want to do individually as partners? So if you go to the Black Jesus strategy, and again, we're doing all this facilitated in Google Slides. Um, and there was an exercise before this where each person actually in, in the format of uh, the alignment exercise said what they why they were doing this why why are they interested in it you know mary keone myself barrett and at the end when we then prioritized those and said you can only choose one thing they came out to collaborative education on the blockchain for a global creative community so as as you facilitate the different interests of the people imagine think of it as i'm saying this is you consulting for a client so what the what the different stakeholders want to do and you bring it together um, as you facilitate the um, translation of the things that people want to do into the form of what the business is including everyone and having everyone feel heard is the one thing that does allow for uh, you to move forward with a vision uh, without it being you dictating a vision or without it being you saying this is what direction, which is an okay model also. And it's a model that the 20th century has been built on, which is one strong white man gets up and says, we're going to conquer these people in Latin America and everybody follows. But we are now in a new era and the, the what we're doing, this work right here that we're doing, learning how to do this is about empowering ourselves and our community to be able to be masters of our own destinies and to build what we want to build uh, together. So the key is it's easy to go out alone in terms of decision making. It's much harder to go together. But if you can facilitate all of those things, the purpose, the what it is that you're making and facilitate the execution, which is to me like where the magic is and it's what Mary does super well with lots of love and in a human way. Um, then you can build anything. And I have to remind myself constantly about that because, you know, I, all the time I want to switch into like, okay, this is what we're doing. And then I uh, 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 back up and go back into the community and facilitate the process to move forward. Um, and I'm Jose Caballero and I'm complete. So, the thing that I would like for the audience 
to do is, you know, share thoughts um, as we move into the next phase of today's conversation, which is about business modeling. How do you guys learn business modeling? Um, we'd love to hear from the community. There's lots of really great conversations going on in the chat around the lean business model versus, you know, traditional business model canvas. Um, what are the nuances? Uh, but this is all really valuable knowledge and I'd like to build a conversation around that. So real quick, uh, right before we dive into this conversation point, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the sharing rules um, and the principles in which we use. And these are Gestalt principles. And the first thing is we don't give advice. Um, what we, we don't say, this is how you should do it. Uh, we don't tell you how to do it. Uh, we share our experiences anecdotally. And we do so either from a first or a second person perspective. Either I have personally run this process or gone through this experience, or I have seen it. This is what I have seen. This is how I've seen it executed. Um, but the, the point is uh, for us just to be able to provide guidance through our own experiences and hopefully allow for space for others to model from our experiences. So let's dive into it. Let's talk a little bit about business modeling. And uh, how did you learn business modeling? So the floor is open, y'all. And I'd love for you guys to share. Looks like Sergio has his hand up. Sergio, what's up, brother? Yeah, so the question, how do I learn business modeling? I think it's the same way that I learned before, just with total immersion in the topic um, and then asking professionals to contrast my opinions of what I learned with their opinions. So that's how I do it, usually with anything that I want to learn. But right now I'm doing like a professional certification with uh, an university in Spain that's teaching me a lot of business modeling, managing and all of that. And reading books, I think expose, exposing yourself to the content related to the topic that you want to learn is the best way to learn, or at least that's how it works for me. I think total immersion is a principle and then applying it. I have tried to start like uh, several uh, business in my short life. None of them had worked before. And I was obsessed with the reason of why this isn't working. And it was because I, having a clue of a business model and how to generate revenue or validate an idea before putting a lot of energy in that. So that obsession, that frustration took me to start researching and getting exposure into the topic. And now I have like three business consultants friends and I just write over WhatsApp to the today. And yeah, that's how I learned. And that's in my opinion, and. uh, uh a cheap way to learn because you're not like spending money trying to get a course before knowing the basics and all of that. I just enrolled into this professional certificate after I got the basics, after I got like a, a, a conceptual basis to start exploring and, and get more familiarized and build some ep- expertise around this. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, you said that you also consume content other places, right? Like it's on YouTube, um, I'm assuming that these are books, maybe websites or blogs. Would you like to share some of those for our audience? Yeah, uh, for example, I think, um, I don't know if you know the book Profit First. I think the author is called James Michalowicz. He has a podcast. I don't know the name of the podcast, but it's great. Um, Michael Yanda has some re- business, creative business related content. I think Gerald Erson on LinkedIn has a great um, repository of content around this topic Mm -hmm. and just YouTube University, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for saying Actually, I can can share with you like all the material that I'm getting from this professional certification. I don't have uh, any problem with that. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing is that it's in Spanish. I can give you the books and, and all of that because that's more easy to find in different languages. But yeah, just that as always, shoot me a message and I'll be there. Yeah, dude. Um, you know, we're starting to uh, populate uh, content and documents and resources in the accelerator program. So, you know, look, the accelerator program is global. 
Um, so whatever language that you may have it, that would be awesome. I'm practicing learning Spanish, so I'm starting to read in Spanish. So look, you know, that's going to be a, an interesting escapade for me. Um, but yeah, definitely. And thank you so much for sharing, Sergio. Would anybody else like to share in their experiences? I'll speak up. Um, so I learned the business model canvas about four years ago, right before mm -hmm. I filed for my official LLC. And um, SCORE, which is a small business association, nonprofit organization that um, provides free business mentoring in the U.S. They use that as one of their first like 10 or 12 steps for starting a business. Mm -hmm. So that's where I initially learned it. I didn't even know there was a lean model canvas until today. I thought they were all <laughs> the same. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I can see how the lean model canvas would be a good to, to start with that. And then when you're more developed, use the business model canvas. But um, then also last summer i did a cornell certificate in women's entrepreneurship and they talked about the business model canvas there again so mm -hmm. um there's also some youtube channels um I, I can't think of any off the top of my head but if you just search business model canvas there's some really good explanation videos um strategizer obviously they're the creator of um the business model canvas they have some good books about certain aspects of the model i have the value proposition design book um which is kind of interesting but mm. it's more visual than like heavy duty content that you're reading so if you're more of a visual learner those are good books for that awesome thank you so much for sharing and if you're in the chat cassie has been posting in the chat and sharing so yeah, thank you so much for that, Cassie. Pape, ¿qué pasó, amigo? Yeah, so I, I have to say that I, I have no experience like with the framework of the business model canvas. I think I saw it once with my my business partner in Psychotropic. I think I think we we did it once, but I I had no idea what it was, and I'm I'm getting a little bit more connected through this. Like I'm learning as I go. But I do think that I've been paying atten attention to what I do empirically and I've been paying attention to how uh, I'm always trying to improve myself and improve my business. And I think that's has what what has allowed me to first like big goal, like moving out of my parents house. Like that was mm -hmm. a big, big step that I had to take. And once I did that, I've been pushing myself to uh, making profit every single month you know so uh i feel like right now i'm i'm testing a lot of stuff i'm trying new things i'm trying and mostly thinking on the core framework and in the user needs since i did core on myself i understood that my work wasn't uh, before i was just so self-centered and it was all just about me and i wasn't thinking about giving value to someone else now I'm putting my work into a context where there's customers, where there's, where there's a story. So I understand my, my story. Now, what is my purpose in, that, in this story? And that's how I, I am approaching it. Uh, I still have a lot to learn, but I'm learning as we go. And I'm so thankful for like being here and being able to just listen to this and listen to you how to do it. And it helps me a lot to keep moving, moving forward and improving myself. So thank you for that. And I hope maybe someone get rela can relate with not being related to the framework. Like here I am, I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> well, you know, persistence is the path. And, uh, you know, our curiosity will, will generally drive us to discover the information that we need to know, right? And. Uh, to be infinitely invested in our curiosity and to understand uh, that we don't understand is such a powerful mindset. Um, but yeah, Pape, thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you here, man. Um, we've got Ross. What's up, Ross? Hi. Hey. Um, 
So for me, actually, based on my experience, because I didn't, I don't, I'm not really good in preparing my own syllabus. For example, if there are certain topics that I want to learn. So I actually learned how to do business modeling and strategy in school. So I, I learned it from, from graduate school. I have an MBA. So from there, they will teach you uh, these kinds of things like entrepreneurship and then um, strategy in general. So um, based on the syllabus that they kind of like and the topics that they taught us, most of um, the references or the sources are actually online and I can share it in the chat. So you know how to uh, like navigate through the business, uh, the business model canvas. Um, how to kind of like start uh, with the strategy, uh, the micro metrics analysis, things like that. Mm -hmm. So again, there's a lot, and there's a lot of authors. You can learn um, theoretical. You can learn um, how to execute them, and I'll, I'll gladly um, share those references. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, Ross. You know. Um, outside of school uh you know where there are like maybe communities that you were able to have conversations around or were there like podcasts or books that you were like oh this is dope i need to check this out yeah so for um for those types of podcasts so again because i'm from from the philippines right so mm -hmm. most of the groups that i've learned or actually uh, that i joined are actually based in the philippines so these are kind of like start up um groups Mm -hmm. right? But in the in in the US when I moved here, that's why I'm I'm trying to join similar groups like the sister, right? So that yeah. I can connect with more people, and then I can kind of like grasp or learn the, mm -hmm. the context in terms of the US market. So I think those are important as well, especially if you are, um, you know, trying to build a a business in a specific niche or like in a specific geolocation you need to be able to have the context and to kind of like understand your target market and it's good um and and one thing to do that is really you know joining these groups that are already mm -hmm. in in that specific um target market it's so much so you know the reason that i asked is because you know our audience is global and yeah. you know uh, i think it's important you know, just like Serio's, like I have resources in Spanish. That's incredible, man. Um, you know, if you can help folks, because we have lists or uh, audience members from all over the world. You know, look at Patricia in the Philippines and Brand Manila. We have another partner, Carve Agency, with Tom Sequoia, um, and they're based out of the Philippines as well. So, you know, the resources that we try to bring into the community for wherever you are in the globe, uh, if they can be impactful and if they can help you develop your skills and your knowledge, Absolutely, share them. So I'm really uh, thankful for this treatment, and I'm glad, like you know, I discovered it through Patricia. <laughs> <I'm really laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ross, for joining us. Uh, Iana. Hi, everyone. Um, hey, you. How's it going? Similar to Sergio, mm -hmm. I started because my business was failing. It's still kind of, I, I, now I know what to do, at least enough to to uh, set it up. Uh, here in, in university, if it's arts, you don't learn anything that has to do with business, selling, marketing, and things like that. So I entered pro group and then I uh, tried the forest method and a bunch of podcasts, books, and documentaries what i'm trying to say that, that i have a hybrid approach so i'm never satisfied with just one option or the the most popular one i make my own ways of the same <laughs> exercise so one inspiration was the rational unified process from ibm so it takes you from uh, minimum viable product to demo to actually launching and actually improving the product. Greg Hickman is a oasis of processes. You can check him out on YouTube. And from here, I learned about how to map your product or service, your main offering, and it's highly detailed so it starts from pre-sale to to i personally added nurturing 
with the clients. So what happens after the project is done and how we reach out. And it also has to do with systematization, automatization and things like that. Um, I couldn't find a good niche exercise. So I looked and I encountered Sam Owens and he does niche clustering as opposed to the vertical uh, and uh, horizontal niching like uh, he focuses on p where people want to be instead of like just saying a lawyer maybe let's say a lawyer that wants to uh, have humanitarian causes and mm -hmm. one niche has a lot of ramifications for example if i hope i'm not talking too much no look no no this is so, Look, so our niche is, is ethically, ethically uh, sourced and produced food and the clusters around it are kind of like this alternative foods i'm talking mm -hmm. crickets uh jellyfish mushrooms yeah. um ethically ethical partners mm -hmm. um influencers top 10 books top 10 most popular books so the good books mm -hmm. and the mainstream books there is a difference between them um, how you recycle and upcycle within the uh, ethically sourced and produced uh, food and so on. The idea is that you're not stuck in a very fixed uh, niche just because it says ethically uh, sourced Source. and produced food. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's what you're talking about, I think is very interesting. And it's very much the approach that I like to take in business modeling which is it's not just about positioning which is a generalized and more classic approach which is okay you look at a market you create a couple of vectors and you just figure out where the company is and you just position up in a way it's more intentional it's like hey it's, maybe it's not about positioning up in a way maybe there are more vectors here and maybe i should just niche down and really dive into a very select very tight very deep relationship oriented community and build my value in that space. So yes. it's like you could be a very small fish in an ocean, or you could be a very big fish in a lake. Yeah, this, this is the blue uh, ocean concept instead mm -hmm. of the red ocean, definitely. Yeah. Then also I found uh, with within the forest method, I've learned a, a, of an alternative method to funnels. It's called the hook model. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it reloads the the triggers that might help people want to return to you and work with you. Mm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Tell me, well, well, you know, we don't have time to dive into that. Now I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh, going, yeah, I'm let's talk about that. Them. I have, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, what? so here's what I'm, here's what I'm hearing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of folks in the chat that are really loving this conversation. Uh, maybe we should do like a weekly chat. You know, I talked to Sergio, he's got tons of ideas. You would have tons of ideas. And we can just sit down and maybe it's just an hour a week and we just talk about like just a different business strategy or framework or exercise um, to provide clarity for the community. Um, yeah, exactly. Just like a circle. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Um, and I think the community is really asking for it. Wow. And also, if you if you're stuck on uh, like how to make a website, uh, mm -hmm. one page, Jonathan Stark or offers like he has like tons of free uh, resources, mm -hmm. and then the it's the E Myth book mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure many of you heard of. It's a, it's very it's a very good book to read, although yeah. it's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And the most boring one is managing the professional service firm, mm -hmm. which talks about hierarchy how mm -hmm. to scale how to downsize uh if you hire seniors uh mid-level and juniors how you maintain that report it's it opens your mind oh, totally. and it has some math that i can't follow but that's not <laughs> the point <laughs> and no. if you guys want i can teach you how to do the niche clustering thing instead of the you know previous the model that everyone uses mm. right now yeah okay so here's what we'll do uh we'll start to put this together and we'll we'll see if we can craft a circle around this um and we'll just like see if we can have like a weekly talk 
that um, would be amazing yeah and let's also do that. i looked i actually looked and deconstructed uh, other people's businesses so i looked at how the future is built how mm. you know how businesses are built yeah and you know i think that would actually be a great exercise because one of the things that i've wanted to do for a while is actually show how i deconstruct brands using core so looking at a business and being able to say okay here's the business model we could just quickly deconstruct it and then map it alongside with the deconstruction of core and we can see where the alignment happens and you can i love that exercise because i can look at certain advertising campaigns and be like just from the creative direction i know that it's not going to be a hit all right you can just yeah. see that it's out of alignment um, and I, yeah yeah one of my friends invented sort of like a auditing your uh competition and uh like a, a champion brand mm. he has an exercise i invented a proof of concept of the main offering yeah and uh what else did i want to say i have to mention one thing about documentaries mm -hmm. uh, because i'm i'm turning into a sort of process <laughs> maniac i am looking at things like how you know before ford made the car let's say he invented a different type of molding which you know made it uh people had cooking pots all of a sudden it, they were everywhere yeah. because so basically small innovations with things that everyone already knows that change the world and the way you automatize and systematize mm. even like let's say a plane before i didn't i don't know if you guys know this but when you would shoot from a plane, you had a big chance of like shooting your own propeller. Yeah. Yeah. So they, just a tiny device made it so that it's it. Uh, the it bullet would interstitially yeah. fly through the propeller. Yeah, it doesn't shoot when the yeah. propeller is in your. Yeah. So you know, I went to school for aerospace and mechanical engineering, and I know exactly the device that you're talking about. I did a breakdown on that device. It was super crazy. I talked about the Red Baron and how it totally revolutionized air combat. But that's a story for another day. Um, Iana, thank you so much for that share. Um, so much powerful insights in that. You'll definitely have to catch the replay for this because she is dropping gem, arthritic jeweler, just diamonds all over the place. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. I, wanted, I wanted to also give you like a hint on how to look at your uh, ideal customers, let's say mm -hmm. in my ethically sourced niche. Let's say I have someone that's interested in their pets so much that they're willing to uh, look for food that's made out of intestines from animals and hooves. So that mm -hmm. doesn't go to waste and the mm -hmm. pet it ends up being a lot more healthier than with what's out there yeah totally totally so guys i hope you guys are listening lots of some powerful stuff there um but yeah let's let's keep it moving um let's move into the upload and um you know i want to open this up to the audience you know we we had this really powerful conversation um but what does that mean for you guys? Like, how, what were you guys able to take away from the talk? Um, what was the, you know, the vibe that you were able to get? Any powerful insights that you can walk away and take into the weekend into next week? I'd love to hear. And the floor is open. Um, one takeaway uh, from the conversation in the chat and what we've been talking here is that the invitation is, or the invitation that I get, and we've been talking about this for a long time, is that as creatives, designers, artists, we're not just pixel pushers, as or I don't remember how people were calling it, is that we have the opportunity to have impact into business and to understand that power, we have to understand that how we impact our own businesses. Uh, and I think uh, even even if you, I want to learn the business model of Canvas, but uh, I also like to just dive in and and make a mess and fix it and all this. But what I, the approach that I give to my clients today is that uh, I approach it with love, and I see love as love is you you do the action that delivers the most value to the other person. So I 
see my clients and when I hear them talk and I understand their purpose, I make it my mission. And I said this before, I'm like this creative Sherpa that I know how to how to connect concepts and ideas and I can draw and I can I can talk and I can connect with them. So I, I just, I guess my value proposition is I'm an ally. I'm on your side. I'm just helping you go from A to B. That's That's what I do. And I do it through illustration, through strategy, through murals, uh, video. And with myself, what I'm doing today is that I know I'm always trying to add value in anything I can. One example, my last job with Carolina Herrera, which was a huge brand. I said, oh, they need probably need to, something for social media. I need something for social media. Let's create a video. I did that. I connected my story to their story. Boom. Like it was a huge impact. I saw results and and. I guess if, if I could have done it with the business model canvas, I did it empirically. Core helped me to do that. Uh, but yeah, what the upload would be, we're, as designers, we're more than just uh, more than just pixel pushers. We are we are capable of having impact on business. So don't forget that. Mm. Powerful share, Pape. Thank you for that testimonial. Floor is open, y'all. I'll jump in real quick. Um, my actually takeaway came from a comment in the chat. So it wasn't exactly verbalized, but Themes was talking about using the lean model canvas to validate um, the custom, you know, validation with customer demographics and testing kind of the product before it's fully developed. So I love that idea and I'm going to totally use that, especially with I tend to get a lot of startup clients attracted to me. And so I really want to help them, but I also feel like I'm not qualified because I'm not in business development, but with the lean canvas, they can kind of create their own without me, but just with the good re reference and resource. Thank you for that, Cassie. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of folks that are talking about there's so much value in the thread. Yeah, we'll save this thread, y'all. We'll save it and then we'll post it on Facebook so you guys can go through it. Uh, Iana. Yeah, I wanted to mention something else. Like, I also saw some ovens master DIY, like in terms of when you teach something, how it becomes the, the product becomes so good that you can do it on your own. Love and that. I love that approach of, fo of focusing on improving the product every time instead of leaving it there and getting complacent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, that's something that I preach to all of my clients that I've ever dealt with. Um, any kind of work that I've dealt with them and I've pitched them, it's always been cyclical. Okay, great. Here's a website and we're going to do it, but we're going to have to address this website again in three years max because the technology is going to change the standards are going to change seo standards are going to change so we're going to take on this project but we need to be revisiting it in three years because that's what's going to be necessary uh, when i do brand strategy we need to be revisiting this strategy on a yearly basis we need to be updating it with data we need to be getting the feedback from our products and our clients and our executives we need to see how employees feel about the processes and we need to make sure that we're always striving for the evolution of this thing that we're delivering. So yeah, uh, Patricia, what's up sister? Hello, it was nice to be just an attendee today and I learned a lot, like the power of the community. Right now I'm talking to Cassie and Ross, we'll set up a call or something to geek out on business modeling canvas because it's something i read but i really wanted to go deep with it mm -hmm. and so yeah i'm just grateful to be here and thank you for sharing all your expertise thank you for being here by uh, sergio ¿Qué pasó? Hermano? yeah my biggest takeaway i i don't think the takeaway is from today but this whole week because we've been talking about business modeling on monday on clubhouse mm -hmm. wednesday and today and i i'm full of ideas i i think this community is super powerful i remember on clubhouse um the speaker i, I forgot his name but 
he explained business modeling like a story, like a story of the dollar that goes through your business. That blew my mind right there. And then on Wednesday, the conversation was super open and that blew my mind as well. And today I just, I don't know, it, it, it was obvious that this community has so much more to offer than graphic design and brand strategy knowledge. I think this is some sort of renaissance vibe that we get from this group because there's a lot of expertise in different areas here and mm -hmm. I'm just super grateful to be here honestly that's my biggest takeaway and I think that grateful is defining like this month for me mm. powerful share Sergio I want to I want to jump in on what Sergio just said yeah um, I think Yeah, I mean, the value of this community is quite a lot. I, it, I think it's more than any any one of us realizes. Having the the ability to share in... in, in <sighs> I'm like <laughs> thinking as I go. <laughs> um, yeah, the ability of, to, to, to be around people who think in similar ways, in similar ways that you do. Um, It's pretty valuable. I mean, I kind of forget how it was before. <laughs> I don't think about it much, but when I do, I'm like, damn, it was different <laughs> uh, when I was alone. So, yeah, big hug to, to all of you. Much love, Mauricio. Much Thank love. you for that, brother. Tino, digame. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to just chime in and say hello to everyone, wish everyone a happy weekend and give my upload for this, uh, this beautiful day. And one valuable thing I got from not just today, but like Sergio, um, just this entire week, I, um, I'm very grateful to be part of this community. And this, this entire week was very enlightening and very, um, very valuable um you know from from monday's clubhouse uh, like said he'll mention again to um the entire week working on my assignment for the accelerator because i'm an accelerator student um i explained to to my my community members in the accelerator that i feel like i'm a i'm a both a patient and a doctor because i'm 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 you know doing my assignments and writing my origin story but i'm also you know, here, you know, joining the, the core office hours and trying to give my experience and I'm doing my, you know, design therapy as well. So I'm, I mean, I'm trying to participate as much as I can. And every day that I join you guys, every day that I'm participating with everyone, I feel just a tiny bit more empowered, just a little more, you know, full of, full of confidence and, and hope that, um, you know, And that I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm stepping into who I really want to be. Uh, and it just feels great. And I just wanted to share that uh, no matter where you are in life, um, I meet beautiful people that are just starting out in their career. I meet beautiful people that are retired already. Uh, and no matter where you are, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to be here. And I'm glad to be here with all of you guys. And it's awesome. Mm, That's thank it. Thank you, Tino. I am Appreciate Tino and I am complete. Mm. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Buckaroo Banzai, a very funky, futuristic, crazy, epic space adventure. And the quote goes like this, wherever you are, there you are. We have more than we need, our resources and our impact and our ability, the systems around us, diffuse those things you know they tell us that we're not powerful enough they tell us that we're not creative enough they tell us that they can't get into business models they tell us that you can't be a powerful creative freelancer you can't own these large agencies you can't build incredible products they are not the system we are the system you are the system everything that we need is right here And so guys you know Uh, Tino talked a little bit about the accelerator program and I'm not going to get too much into it. I shared a little bit about, you know, in, in the slides, some of the work that he's working on. If you guys are interested, definitely reach out to me, hit me in the DMs. I'm available. I'm around. Um, but, you know, I just want to 
remind you guys that we are the system. So as always, like and subscribe if you dig in this content, if you dig in the vibes, if you dig in the jams and the music. I want to thank you guys for being here. And let's dive into music and no cookies. Where's the where's the no cookies at? That's funny. It's there. Oh, oh music and invisible cookies. <laughs> music and invisible back? cookies. <laughs> it's no cookies. It's no cookies. It means... <laughs> and that's some experimental typography right there. <laughs> No cool kids. <laughs> Music and no cool kids. As a t-shirt there. So yeah, guys, floor is open. Sessions here. You guys can chill as long as you want. We'll be here for another few minutes. But uh, yo, the vibes today were powerful, y'all. Super. This was an awesome week. I think every broadcast was super powerful. Awesome week. Yeah. Can I say something crazy? <laughs> Get wild and crazy. Always. That's what we're here Always. For. I was thinking today, uh, how how big is this community? How many people are in the Facebook Facebook group, for example? A thousand three hundred. Yeah. A thousand two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, I also recommended someone that joined and I'm so happy because I rarely get to do that and stay by, stay by something so strongly. What I wanted to say is that if we follow each other on Instagram, um, ideally, we can grow to, you know, that uh, gate of 5k. And like we have so much more eyes on us as a community because every follow that means every friend that everyone has sees you and you uh, and the others that you followed mm. yeah we we should definitely do that you know part of the goal for the accelerator program Miana is at the end of next week we're going to do a call sort of going to be like graduation where we step out with our stories and we update all of our socials and we're like, rah, rah, rah. That's the perfect time to do that. Let's set that up. We're gonna do a Instagram, we're gonna do a social, what should we call it? I don't know. I'm gonna think of a clever name. That's what I'm saying is hacking the system, the algorithm of Instagram, mm -hmm. because we grow a community, we follow each other and we cross that threshold together. Yes, I love that idea. That's actually clever. Yeah. So that's a beautiful idea and we're going to do it. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I do is whenever anyone new folks come in on that Facebook platform, I always ask for them to share their socials so that folks can follow them. But yeah, let's definitely do that. And let's build up with each other. But I mean like an active pursuit of this thing. Yes, like we could like every week. Are you following us? Better follow us because we're following you. Let's go. Follow train. Uh, uh. It's the follow train. That's what it is. And let me let me share with you let, let, let me share with you the one technique to beat the algorithm the Instagram algorithm. There is no Instagram algorithm. Build real human connections as we're doing here. That is the only way to beat the algorithm. If you, if you play that game, you will go crazy. Like I don't play that game anymore. It's so bad. I just want to connect with real people, find real conversations, find artists that I love find people that I can help. That is my way. And I think if, if anyone can, can take that way to beat the algorithm, we can make this world better. So feel free to connect with more people if you want. I agree with you, Pape, but there are some more. So, so 100 followers, 500, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. There, Those are walls. Those are really algorithm. You can't bypass those. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, uh, uh, I'll unless, add something. You know. I'll add something to the mix to the conversation, and and, I, and I'm gonna express uh, 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 how would you say? Uh, I wouldn't say anxiety. I would say uh, so. When I first started the school, I did everything very organically. So we just followed, and you know, when we started creating content together, uh, Chris and I, uh, it just was organic. There wasn't a lot of like, you know. Um, strategizing around algorithms and uh am i muted 
no, I'm not major. Um, and then later, as it, it grew to to numbers like you know, that were fairly high organically. Um, but then starting to harness and categorize and tag and Chris did a really amazing job at looking at how the systems worked and hacking it. So I never have grown past my organic reach on Instagram or on Twitter, et cetera, because I never really pursued it programmatically. This week we had our first social media strategy uh, session and we're having a follow up next week. So I think it's a little bit of both. I think that there's definitely uh, the organization. But what I think Yona's saying is very specifically just let's follow each other and let's support each other. Not, there, there wasn't anything like uh, conspiratorial or algorithmic there other than let's love each other. Uh, but I think also we should have the conversation about what does it mean to structure that in a, uh, in a more um, organized way. You shared in the social media meeting, uh, Pape, that you actually uh, uh, also advertise on, on Instagram. That was super insightful for me. And I'm like, okay, this is some stuff that we can start doing. Um, and but the, the last thing I'll say in this uh, milk and no cookies or whichever it is, um, the truth is that you can build anything and any business and any idea with with just connection and current the currency of connection, just being yourself, telling your story, like just that act of really telling your story and telling it really well and like connecting with people, you know, what comes from inspiration, the way that a conga song, like, you know, or like, a, or a salsa song, like Pape was saying, can just really touch the heart because the story that you're sharing, it's the story of everyday love. It's the story of, you know, uh, uh, unrequited love, of infatuation, of breakups, of like all these things that we've all gone through. Uh, and the more that we share our story authentically, that itself becomes the algorithm. The truth is really ultimately the ultimate glue uh, for what we're doing. And, and, and getting to that point to where we can share ourselves without fear and without shame and without attachment to outcomes and to when I, you know, like there's, this, I, I hear this all the time, I'm waiting for X or I'm waiting for Y before I like start doing it. Um, but just starting where you are, like Keone's quote, wherever you are, you are there. Um, it's really, do you want to connect and do you want to share? And do you have something that you want to say? And if you're not doing it, then the question is, what's stopping you? Are you attached to X or Y? Or is it simply, that you don't know what to do or is it simply that you don't have enough time or that you just don't care so it's being really honest with yourself i love how pape shares i follow pape i'm really so the story that i'm getting from from what he's doing is how he's developing characters how he's you know in, engaging in his community what the business is that he's supporting so for me it gives me a really great way of understanding and and, and knowing how to co-create with someone when I have a sense of their story, when I don't have a sense of their story or of like what they're interested in, it's harder to dovetail. Anyway, I am Jose and I'm complete. And I just wanted to also, uh, I, I wasn't, if it, I came up strong with what I said, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't trying to like attack any, any point of view. I was just, is that, in the past, I used to pay a lot of attention to Instagram and it gave me too much anxiety. I actually stopped posting for a year and uh, it's because I wasn't doing it authentically. I was just looking to uh, grow there. But once I, as you said, Jose, once I started sharing my story authentically, I'm just being myself, you know, and that connects with some people and with those people that connect and they reach to me, I help, always help and I feel that always come back so just share the love wherever you are instagram with your clients in your work through a webinar like anywhere like i i just try to be as transparent as i can and just show my brand that is who i am my perception and i just give it away that's my technique you didn't come off strong pop i can take it with latinos <laughs> it's just a more you know um uh spirited conversation 
All right, y'all. We're going to wrap this up. This has been an incredible session. Um, this entire week of broadcast was super powerful. Um, I'm grateful for each and every one of you guys. Um, and as we step into the weekend and prepare for Monday and the next week, I just want to remind you guys that you guys are incredibly powerful. You know, the, the skills and forces and the impact that you desire is attainable right here, right now, within you and within your community. Um, and if you ever get lost, all you have to do is ask. You know, we're here to support and nurture that development for you guys. So thank you guys again. Have a powerful weekend and take care of you guys. You guys are incredible. Peace, y'all. Bye. After party. Yes, card. Plug it. Where's where, where, where's the after party? Discord.